Hey everyone, this is Scrap Computer here. This video is going to cover region skills. This is a pretty funny topic. I think a lot of us have played or thought about at one point because we've all played with a lot of people from other regions and thought or even had a little bit of a joke about it. I'm going to cover my opinions on the subject of whether this is true or based or not on my own anecdotal experiences and of course a lot of data and logical explanations. Give me time in this video to finish my arguments. There are a lot of holes I fill through out. My first topic, region size. Each region has a total amount of the total players who basically play League of Legends. Each Certain servers are more popular than others, that seems logically pretty standard. These numbers are from the League API. The largest server is Korea, the second largest is EU West, the third is North America, and the fourth is EU and and the rest are relatively small, you can see them in the diagram. Keep this in mind. In a server with 1 million people getting to Diamond is a pretty real accomplishment, you're in the top 2% of players. So that basically means it represents that you're better than 980,000 players to get Diamond you're in the top 20,000 players basically. It's very impressive. You have to go through a lot of players and when you get to this top, there are more divisions due to more people in the region. Additionally, the server with so many people means competition is ripe. There are so many people you just have to be better than than when there's fewer people. Now, I'm also gonna explain how this is also representative. I know there's more numbers for the bigger the server, but I'm gonna say there's higher chances of there being better people. I will explain this later. In a room of five people, average people playing chess, she may have a good chance to win. A room with a thousand people, you have to be amazing to win. It's a similar concept with League. So for the second example, the secondary server has 100,000 people in it. You get to the top of the server in the diamond, which is approximately the top 2%. You had to beat 98,000 players in general skill. So you're in the top 2,000 of players. This is just less competition in general, but let me explain even further more this train of thought. Getting to the top of a ring of 100,000 players is difficult. Getting to the top ring of a million players is extremely difficult. So let's say getting to Challenger in EU West, which has millions of players on it, right? Getting to that point is really freaking hard. The top 50, getting up there, you've got to be, you've got to be better than millions of players. Let's say, for example, the Russian server is getting to Challenger on the Russian servers with a couple of 200,000 people and maybe, eh, not being the top 50 out of 200,000 people, once again, an accomplishment. Very good, very, very, very prominent. But is it as good as being at the top 50 out of, let's say 1.5, 2 million people? I don't think so. The chess example is pretty good. You're good at chess. You go into a room of 100, your chance of winning and being the best is a little low, but possible in a room of 10,000. Your chance of getting to the top and winning with your good ability in chess as well. So let's let's represent this even further more. Say in the top, the top 10 of the only people represented in this chess tournament. Getting to the top 10 of the 100 is hard, but it's 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 pretty possible if you're good. Getting to the top 10 out of the 10,000 people playing in that chess room would be nigh on impossible unless you had unrepresented skill in chess. It's exactly the same for the League of Legends servers. Being better than normal on a small server gets you fairly close to the top surprisingly because there just isn't as many potentially good people. Being better than average on a massive server gets you to the middle high standard. It's not much but it's noticeable. The che Numbers just breed competition. Now my second topic. Tactics and numbers. Similar to my previous point with only a different lens, more heads on a problem generally create better or bigger solutions. It's just basic logic. If you have a room of 100 people, each individual coming up with a solution, and we compared those 100 solutions with a group of 1,000 people individually coming up with solutions, the 1,000 ideas on average people would outweigh the 100 ideas on average people. It's just basic logic. This means that more tactics and strategies will come from bigger servers. Additionally, matching that with a greater, hence more difficult numbers, we see the vast majority of meta play coming from the bigger servers, EU West, NA, and Korea. If you think about it, you'd agree. Warning tactics were born in predominantly NA and US. Stalling was generated in NA. Rotation meta strats have been mainly developed in Korea and then secondary EU West. Composition strats mainly developed in EU West and then from there slightly in Korea and NA's picked it up just recently. As far as I'm aware, there is the three main servers that generated most of the strategies in League of Legends. From here, all servers stolen from each other. They steal the best strategies and that's good. That's what we need. But let's be honest. How many global strategies have been made in the OCE server? 
I actually don't know of any. Uh, tactics are born from hard circumstances, add in a number of people, and we see a logical line of creation. The chance of a server with 2 million people coming up with a new, or finding that one individual champion is OP, is a lot more likely than a server with 100,000 people. Just is, again, fundamental basic logic. The third topic, professional players. This is a good backup for my example. Uh, you will all notice and laugh at it. How many professional teams can you name without an Asian on it? I mean, there are a few, but they're few and far between. How many teams can you name that don't have any Europeans in it? Or Asians? I bet you're, you're scratching your head, oh, those guys, and uh. Finally, how many teams have professional Brazilian players? Russian? OCE? South American? I'm talking the best teams, not just the little tiny teams, the best teams. You're not gonna find many. Even if one comes to mind, it's just further back up from my previous points. The bigger the server, the harder it is to get better. It's not like Asians are physically better as much as we like to joke about it. Or Europeans are better because they're second best somehow and NA scrubs are better. It's not about the the geographical location, in my opinion, it's about how many people there are. It's just more people to play the game. The more people that play the game, it gives them a statistical advantage to have more competition and more better players. More people, more players lead to more higher level players. It's, again, logic. For every 100 players, two are diamond. Let's say for that example, every 100 players, we get two diamond players. This is my main point out of all of them. If you have a hun every 100 people has two diamond players. So let's say a server is 2 million. 2 million divided by 100 is a lot of possible diamond players, whereas a server with 100,000 divided by 100 isn't nearly as much. Naturally, basically what I'm saying is, there are millions of people out there that are fantastic or could potentially be some of the best players in League. They're not playing it right now, they're not playing League of Legends. There, there are hidden professionals everywhere who have the potential. Some of you could even be listening and you just picked up the game, who knows. But what I'm saying here is, the more people that play, if, you had a, if a full country played League, they would have the most League of Legends professional players because Every single person playing it just means the chance of you coming to the, the cream of the cream, the cream of the crop, getting to the top is just there. The more people you have, the more better players you find as well. It just makes logical sense, you know? Uh, it's really, really interesting to look at it that way. It really is this number game. The more people that play the server, the more higher level players you get with special skills or natural talent at the game. It's the reason why a server like OCE, with exceptions from a man, Anthropic, uh, the streamer who's linked below, uh, they don't have too many next level good players, or any pro players, not many. That's the comparable lack of high level depth being fought there. It's not, it's just the numbers, number one, and number two, the second correlating strategy is also um, how many how many people come up for competition. There's less very good players in the server because there's less people playing that server, so the high level players of that server don't do very well. It's kind of a weird logical line, but it, it does make sense. If all these examples aren't enough, uh, now my own anecdotal experience. I'll be using NA servers as a big example. Please don't try to be too butthurt. It's anecdotal. I'm telling you, it's not proof, but I've experienced in this specific server, which is the reason why I'm using it as the example. I stream and have played with every player from every region, and I'm telling you from my experience, the Korean and the US servers generally play better or a little smarter than their less played region counterparts on equal ELO. I've been in a TeamSpeak calls and people of exactly the same on respect on their respective servers and have pretty noticeable gaps in skill and strategy. And anyone that's played this game a long period of time would start to see these gaps too. Even I find that any players aren't in the ELO that my server would insinuate. Uh, EU West would not put them on their level basically. I've seen a gold in my stream defeat a master NA player. Now they got pretty lucky but still the NA player was, was really good but not so crazy. Uh, it was a counter matchup to be fair, but still it's interesting. I extremely commonly see EU &E players on a plat level getting beaten by my streams, golds, and sometimes high silvers. Uh, I'm talking on a mechanical and conceptual level here, which is just strange. Of course the opposite is true, sometimes the opposite gets beaten, but for me personally it's pretty rare. I actually have started calculating ELO and lower brackets for players on smaller servers by a bit and the equality on my stream's games actually improved. Uh, people always complain that it's a stomp, it's a stomp, and I was like, how, how is this a stomp? I'm calculating the ELO uh, personally in custom games. I'm calculating this as a diamond versus a diamond and then I went, oh, the servers kind of kind of uh, mess that up a little bit because I, I would get players that were from NA and they'd say I, I'm a platinum player and I'd look it up and they are and then I'd add them in like that and 
Unfortunately, uh, we see uh, a problem here. I played on a diamond level on NA. I only played a couple of games or a 10 on it. I could not believe it was diamond. It felt like low medium plat to me. I never had an easier time in what should be a relatively difficult elo. The enemy members had limited knowledge and game sense. Their mechanics were good, but not amazing or great. And I experienced just less game abuse than I normally would get in my own natural server EU West. People weren't punishing me as hard. They weren't taking my mistakes as heavily. They weren't making as many advantages. They weren't forcing as many objectives in the US like I normally see. Around seven out of the 10 games just felt platinum to me. I, I played this game since just after beat. I've played thousands and thousands of games. I can tell the skill level from my own server extremely well. I can guess a person's elo on my stream by how they speak about a certain champion or their playstyle based on a single champion they've mentioned in passing. And from this knowledge and experience, I placed that NA was just just essentially a slightly easier server and slightly off from EU West and of course Korea would dominate EU West as well. I just find this from my experience. I'm not saying this is starter rockets, I'm just saying from those games and from what other people have told me and NA players and versus in my stream viewer games, it's just relatively easier. I've played EU Yenny as well and I couldn't stop laughing at the that ELO's platinum players which felt like I would say even low goals to me. Once again, I'm not hitting. I'm just saying that this is how I experience these servers every single time. And I'm not biased. I'm not a biased person inherently. I'm a very fair person to try to be. And this is just my experience. And most other players who have played with me, everyone I've asked who's a higher level on EUS, when I ask them to go to another server, they, they, they're in tears laughing at how simple it is comparatively. Even watching streams, I find that certain regions seem to have a noticeably less overall skill. For this video, I watched a Russian streamer. I won't say his name. But uh, he's master tier on that server, or at least was master tier, I'm not entirely sure now. That level of basic master tier was maybe low diamond. Maybe. Uh, I've watched around 15 of his games, just passive on scripting and such, and just working away. Each time, I didn't really see those next level master plays. I didn't see the rotations. I didn't see the CS and capability. I didn't see these people making next level plays like I normally do when I'm watching, let's say, the Korean server master tier. These guys know what they're doing. It's really noticeable when you compare the two. I've seen people playing consistently well on master tier, and it's okay, but I, I felt like if they went against the Korean master tier people, they would get eaten alive. Absolutely finally, sometimes I get complaints in my videos that the gameplay I represent is horrible. Uh, it's called this for multiple people. Multiple people have said to me, this is bronze gameplay. They've went as far as saying bronze gameplay. Did you know I get my clips from spectating on LOL Nexus, which basically is a site, it's a really good one that allows you to basically spectate anyone you want, including your friends as well, and just check up their stats also, it does, another, it does a few things, but I use them to spectate. From here, seen below, I can pick the level of play I wish to spectate. I can filter out any of the bronze, silver, golds, diamonds, plats, and I can just go to the, the, the best. I have always pick Challenger, or around this level. The problem is, I spectate the first good looking game. I've only recently realized why you guys would complain. I, I just couldn't get it for a while. It sometimes is horrible gameplay. I further check into this and I find that I've mainly been spectating the low populated servers. Recently I've been spectating more EU West and Korea and I, right now at this point, I will not spectate a Russian or South American server. I just, I won't do it. Even their challengers could show bronzy tendencies. And it's it's crazy saying that. It sounds very rude as well, but that, that I have used those servers and a lot of people have complained to me, actively complaining that the, the gameplay is not good enough. I need to up your game. And I couldn't understand because I was getting them from or what I thought was full on challenger games. And this is the, this is the main kick for this video. I, I realized this and kind of laughed about it. And I went, there is very clearly a difference here. There's very clearly a difference in the skill level of the, let's say OCE challengers and the Korean challengers. The, the, the change, the difference in the level of these servers is, is pretty awe inspiring. And I just thought it would, be, it would kind of make a good video to maybe squash some of the NA is bad or EU West is bad. Um, I think it's, uh, I think also we have to look at this on in an individual basis, but I, dig, I digress. Um, I just thought this was a good point to basically show you that some of the servers do lack a little bit in quality of gameplay. I've ended this in my personal experience, which I hope no one has got too offended at. I hope that the data, logic and your own experience it's enough for you to believe me. I wanted to finally end on explaining that before I get torn to shreds in the comments, I'm not saying 
every low populated server has only bad or worse players in it. I'm saying that the value of them due to the numbers leads to their elo being slightly watered down, but it doesn't mean that they're horrible. Uh, it doesn't mean there's no next level average Russian player out there who could crush Koreans. I'm not talking about this in an individual basis. Maybe you are the best person on a Korea secretly playing NA Challenger, I don't know. But at the end of the day, I'm not doing this for singular people, I'm doing this as a whole, as a full server, as an expression of that, not as an expression of a single person. I just wanted to emphasize that so no one goes, you know, like, and starts complaining. I just wanted to emphasize that so I can mention this in the comments and people start, you know, eating my face off with a rusty hook. And that's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully, no one gets you offended. If you like it, like it. Dislike it, dislike it. If you agree with what I said, you can uh, subscribe. And if you don't agree and you're from NA and have hurt you too much, you can unsub. I am totally fair. Beyond that, guys, have a great day. Best luck in the rift. Please don't kill me. And hopefully, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching.